Hey everyone, this is Tutorial Joe. I'm back again. It's been over a year since my last video, uh, but I just wanted to come back and share another QLab quick pro tip. Today I'm going to be talking about using multiple Q lists in a theatrical sound design and why you would want to do that. For people just starting out, or maybe people have been at it for a long time, you only use one cue list, and you might not even be aware that you can use multiple cue lists or what the point would be. So this is QLab 3, but this is the same for QLab 2, and I assume it's the same for QLab 4, which just came out like a month ago, and I haven't had a chance to use it yet. First, how do you add uh, a cue list? So in view, you want to go to cue list and active cues to make sure you can see it. So we could see it before and I just made it go away. Now I'm bringing it back. So you see, you automatically will begin with the main cue list. And then all you have to do is hit add a new one and a new one will pop up. And these are all in the same show file, but they're different cue lists. Really, this is just a great way to organize stuff um, by um, sort of what type of cue it is. So the main cue list you want to use for your show. This is where all the different cues go. But you but this workspace can reference other cue lists which may contain I don't know, you put music in one, you put sound effects in another. That's usually what I do. Why would you want to do that? You might wonder. Uh, well, the biggest reason that I use multiple cue lists, especially for sound effects, is if I have something that's very repetitive. So this this is a um, show where it was very repetitive. There was a lot of door opening and door closing sounds. So what I did was I created another cue list, and let me just change the name right here for you, where I put the repetitive sound effects. All right, so every time the door opens, there's a snowstorm outside in this show. Every time the door opens, you hear the wind outside and then the door shuts. This happens like five, six, seven times in this show. And a beginner, well, an absolute beginner, would probably hard edit this stuff in Audacity or something and then just and then plug in that cue every time. But then the issue is what happens if you then need to adjust the level? Like you get in the tech and you have seven different sound effects spread throughout the show and all of a sudden you realize that it's not loud enough. So now you have to go back through and find every instance of it and increase it. The better way to do it is to make a sound effects cue list, create your um, sound effects, put them out here, it doesn't matter how you do it. And I'm gonna explain what I've got going on here because it's a little more advanced than that. And then use play cues or start cues, whatever you wanna call it, that reference this other list and you, you can open that and see them all here. So, so your main workspace can reference the stuff in the other cue lists, right? So then the other thing is when you have repetitive cues, maybe you don't want them to always be the same. Like for instance, a door opening and door shutting because it happens so frequently, um, the audience might be able to tell if you use the same exact sound clip every time. So that's what I did over here is I randomized it. So I have this door opening group cue and these are all just a bunch of door opening sound effects and it's group cue set to start random child. So, so it's different every time, right? Same with door closing. I didn't make it as diverse because I didn't think it mattered. So it's going to be dip, it's going to be random every time. And this is you know I think it's kind of neat to add this element of randomness to a design so that it's never quite the same. Now you don't always want to do that, but when it's something that's relatively inconsequential, like a door opening and shutting, that doesn't really tell a story necessarily. It's just we need to hear it. This can be kind of cool. Now for wind, I got lazy. I only have one. So how did I cue this? Let me, let's see. What does this appear? Door close. Fade and stop. Huh. All right, so let's see what I did. I'm not, <laughs> I forget what I did. 
Ah, so here's what I did. This is this is two layers, and this is thinking like a programmer, okay? This is sort of like a two this is like a two for one QLab pro tip. Think like a programmer. I have it I have like multiple steps. This you know, maybe I overcomplicated something that was simple, but I think that this is actually um, a smarter way to go about it. So when you call the queue to open the door in the workspace, it'll it'll hit it'll play enter door open enter in the other queue list enter door open will play door opening and then it will play the wind see in all right so this is on an auto follow so 2.5 seconds later door close will fire and door closes this one, and that fades the wind sound, and then plays the door closing sound. So does that make sense? It's a little, it seems convoluted, but I think that it's a much more flexible way of doing it, and also adding randomness to it, so that if I ne now need to go change door opening sounds, instead of going through my main workspace and finding all the places where I put a door, I just go over here and change it once or cha change it all together since I have it random, right? Now this isn't necessarily what you wanna use all the time, but it's, I think it's kinda of cool. It adds another element to your design and it's a good way of organizing things so you can do edits quickly. So let's look at another example. Okay, this is a tune of Christmas. I put sound effects over here. So, so the there's, a, there's a scene where the telephone goes off like 10 times. And so all that is, yeah, let's find it over here. Here's, here's one, see all these ringing answers? If I had done it where I like dragged in that sound effect every time, or even if I copy pasted, it would have been nightmarish, especially if I had to go and edit something later. So these are all just start cues. And so over here, it's just playing the telephone. And then here's another small tip. This is a three for one. To stop it, so it stops it, and at the same time, it plays just the very tail of the phone. That way you don't just get a random, you wouldn't, if you don't have that tail, it sounds like very abrupt and not natural. So you get that ring at the end. So then there's the hair dryer that goes off three or four times, and then here's another door. And again, it's just a way of streamlining your, your um, programming. And then I also uh, put pre-show music and intermission music in a separate music cue list. Now this isn't absolutely necessary, but it's a, an interesting way to keep it all organized. Okay, so the, the, I like to do it. I don't always do it because it, it can be a little inconvenient to go back and forth. But in some shows, especially bigger shows, I try to keep the music off of the main cue list. I try to keep it in its own separate thing. And then this last one, here's a, It's a Wonderful Life radio show. I did the same thing for this. Not, I did it with all my pre-show and intermission music and post-show music and is, is in a separate file. And then my car sound effects, which happen, which happen three or four times throughout the show are here. Um, again, so that I can edit it one time instead of five or six times. Now, of course, the drawback is if you have cues that are slightly different, you can't really use this method unless you find a way to modify them. And the great thing about QLab 3 and QLab 4 is that they have effects and things built in. So a lot of times you can do this kind of editing on the fly within QLab, which I think is always the best way to do it. Always do soft edits in QLab rather than exporting things to your DAW. So yeah, I, I had a few tips in there. So first of all, use multiple cue lists to keep things organized and also to streamline repetitive cues. You can use uh, randomness if you, if you want to, to add a special element to your um, production. And uh, also try to think a little bit like a programmer. Think about how you can do things in a, in a way that I guess what I mean by that is do it in a way where it may take a lot of initial setup and it may take you thinking a bit 
more logically about things, but in the end, it'll make it much easier and faster for you to make edits on the fly during tech. All right, well, uh, it's good to be back. Like it if you like it, and uh, I'll be back with more <laughs> maybe in another year. <laughs> I'll try to do it more often than that. All right, well, thanks for watching.